Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC, where it is worth saying that it is much better to be a Liverpool fan than to be a Chelsea fan. But we'll talk about that somewhere else. Uh, Today is a quiet day. Obviously, Liverpool didn't play last night. They played the night before. What we saw last night was Manchester City advance in the Champions League and Real Madrid advance in the Champions League as PSG did what they always do and choke when the pressure is really on. So that now means that Bayern Munich, Real Madrid and Manchester City are all through to the quarterfinals along with the Reds and we could draw any one of those three. Ideally, you'd like to see two of them face each other, knock each other out as Real have done to PSG while we pick the bones elsewhere, but we'll take whoever comes along. Um, There's not a whole lot to talk about today, really. But if you travel over to This Is Anfield, there are some very, very good articles worth giving a read to. A piece on Joel Matip entitled How Liverpool's Elite Ball Carrier Revived His Career. Piece written by Jason Hughes. It is well worth your while giving that one a read. Liverpool faced 10, sorry, faced defining 10 days ahead to keep every plate spinning, written by the excellent Stephen Scrag. Do give that one a read. It is absolutely outstanding and delves into what could be coming up for the Reds. When Liverpool saw Red to give real response to this is Anfield, so what? This is another very, very good piece written by Joanna Durkin about Liverpool, Real Madrid, the rivalry, the statement by Marca back in 09, this is Anfield, so what, and how Liverpool responded in those games, giving Real an arse-kicking that lived on for many years. Uh, Liverpool have handed professional contract to promising £500,000 left-back. Liverpool have moved, moved quickly to tie academy left-back Callum Scanlon to a professional contract marking the next step following his £500,000 arrival. He was brought in from Birmingham in 2020, just before the Christmas. Uh, Stefan Basetic arrived around the same time. You'd expect that he might be next for a contract. Scanlon is very, very highly regarded. Very, very highly regarded as a long-term potential first-team starter in the same calibre as Harvey Elliott, Cade Gordon and Bobby Clark, who were brought in as part of this recruitment drive to bring in some of the best young English players from other clubs. Uh, Luis Diaz gives surprise response to his instant impact. Luis Diaz has admitted his own surprise at how quickly he has been able to settle in, crediting his teammates and coaches for helping him adjust. That's written by Jack Lusby. Well worth your while delving into that one. Liverpool fans think Kareem Benzema has dealt Mo Salah contract evidence. So this is something that I've been beating the drum about for a while now. And indeed, one of my tweets is in this piece. Uh, Benzema is 34 years of age. Luka Modric is 36 years of age and was also outstanding last night. There is absolutely no reason that Mo Salah cannot be performing at this same level when he is 34 like Benzema, 33 like Robert Lewandowski. You know, you go up and down the line, you look at the elite players, Messi, Cristiano, 
Lewandowski, Suarez, Benzema, Modric, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're all still performing at this elite level well into their 30s. And it's not just in football. You look at the NBA, you look at LeBron James, 36, 37, still one of the five or six best players in the league. Kevin Durant, 33, in the same mold. James Harden's well into his 30s now. He's an elite level player. You can go up and down the NBA. You can look at baseball. You can look at NFL. Look at Tom Brady well into his 40s, carrying on playing. Obviously, these sports are different to football, but... So much of it now comes down to the sports science part and how much players are putting into their own welfare. And it's well documented how much Mo Salah puts into his own welfare, into his fitness regime, both in season and in the off season, into his nutrition at the club and away from the club. Mo Salah takes phenomenal care of himself in the same manner that's that. Cristiano Ronaldo did and what gets me is you hear people say yeah but when he loses a step of of pace well hang on a second let's let's delve into this first things first the idea that Mo Salah relies on his pace is nonsense just go take a look at his goal against Man City at his goal against Watford and people want to make out that this guy isn't one of the very best technical players in world football. If the ultimate show pony, Neymar, scored a goal as good as the one Salah did against either Watford or City, it would be played endlessly. We'd never, ever stop seeing that goal played. But because it's Salah, it's overlooked, and he's a pace merchant. In the same way that Kylian Mbappe would be deemed a pace merchant if he played for Liverpool by these mindless people who have all the intelligence of a scaffolding plank and really shouldn't comment on a game they know absolutely nothing about. Mohamed Salah is the best player on planet Earth right now. I know he's having his little bit of a rough spell, the first one of the season that he's had, and Benzema's making his case, Lewandowski's making his case, but Salah, from August on, including his time at the AFCON, Showed he's the best player in the world right now. And it's not, you can't be that if you're just about pace. Mohamed Salah's technical level is incredible. You've also got to factor in how does pace decline? Because you see a guy like Vardy, he's still as quick as he was. He can still beat 98% of all Premier League defenders in a foot race. You see a guy such as Cristiano. He can still beat people for pace. So why would Salah's diminish? It's not so much about, and I spoke to a former international rugby player about this, a guy who played as a winger and was heavily reliant on his pace. And what he told me was, as he aged, it wasn't that his top speed declined as much as the volume of sprints he was capable of declined. So he was still able 10, 15 times a game to turn on the burners and go at full speed. What he wasn't able to do was do it 20 to 25 times a game, which he had been capable of in his mid to late 30, uh, mid to late 20s. And he was adamant about this. And this is somebody most people will know. This isn't somebody who's just a random player. This is a very, very well-known, very well-respected player. And this is what he told me. I had no problem maintaining my top speed. I had a problem maintaining the volume of sprints that I was capable of. That was what he said to me. So I don't believe we'll see Salah's pace diminish massively. Could he lose 5%? Yeah, maybe. And what? He's still going to be faster than 90% of players in the world. That's not going to have a massive effect. You all see people, people when you use the Vardy example, and Jamie Vardy's 36 years of age now or whatever, and people say, oh, yeah, but he started playing really late. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He started playing at the same time as Salah, the same kind of age, 16, 17, at a high level in an academy. 
Vardy went into non-league, went into Sunday League. Do you think, for one second, it was easier for Vardy playing non-league and Sunday League football on pitches that you wouldn't put cattle out on, getting volleyed up in the air while referees looked the other way, than it was for Salah playing on proper football pitches with proper care. Do you think it was easier for Vardy training by himself at the local park than it was for Salah with access to professional coaches? Do you think it was easier for Vardy living off a chipper diet than it was for Salah with nutritionists? Jamie Vardy put far far harder miles on his body between the ages of 17 and 23, 24 than Salah did. Far harder. And as I've said before, you give Salah the contract he deserves and nobody can deny he deserves it. Whether it's 350 or 400 grand a week, you give him that contract for four years after next season. That will bring him to 2027. He'll be 35 years of age. There is absolutely no reason he cannot do exactly what he's done for the last five years in terms of production. There's no reason he can't average 32 goals a season across the next five years with his intelligence his movement you have to be kidding me he will learn to adapt his game as well if physical barriers start to get in his way because he's an elite level player and if he does that if he finishes this season on around 160 goals and goes and bangs 160 goals across the next five seasons Well, all of a sudden, he's within, what, 26 of Ian Rush? All he'd need then is a two-year extension and Jamie Vardy numbers to break Ian Rush's record. And this idea that he relies on his pace is just something stupid people say. His pace is an additional weapon. His first touch is out of this world. His dribbling ability is out of this world. His shooting ability is out of this world. Does he sometimes make bad decisions? Yeah, he does. Everybody does. Messi does. Cristiano has made more bad decisions on a football pitch than you'll ever see anybody make when it comes to shooting when he should pass. I had one idiot tell me yesterday, Cristiano is a much better finisher than Salah. I would like you to go and have a look at his conversion rate. Please do that for me. Please do that for me. Oh, but Cristiano's better in the air. So? Does Salah rely on scoring goals in the air? No, he does not. No, he does not. Salah has better movement than Cristiano ever did. Salah is a better finisher than Cristiano ever was. He's a better penalty taker than Cristiano has ever been. Salah will score goals for a long, long time to come. And for the few people who said to me, no Liverpool fan says Liverpool should sell Salah because he's about to turn 30. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. You go into the replies and comments of any article or tweet regarding Salah's contract and you will find a plethora of buffoons. A plethora of absolute gobshites saying Liverpool should sell him now because of his age. It is absolute nonsense. Give Salah his contract and move on. On liverpool.com today, we have the headline piece, Liverpool of something money can't buy is remarkable. 1.6 million PSG and Manchester City 1.6 1.6 billion PSG and Manchester City reality remains. This being that you just can't buy European greatness. You just can't buy it. Uh, there's a piece about Roman Abramovich and his sanctions. Liverpool make 100 million, make first move in 100 million double transfer. 
as Joe Gomez pushes for exit. Uh, this is the media digest piece. Liverpool's make the first move for uh, Jeremy Pino of Villarreal. Very, very talented player. Uh, according to 90minute.com, and it is Graham Bailey who's not, not bad. Uh, Joe Gomez is pushing for a summer exit. Liverpool face, tra- uh, sorry, Liverpool sense transfer opportunity. That is about Kareem Adeyemi. Give that a glance if you have time. Liverpool have one month to sign the next Philippe Coutinho on free transfer and save FSG millions. This, I believe, would be Claudinho, uh, currently playing for Zenit St. Petersburg. The issue here is that there's been no clarity on what it would mean to sign these players. Because the statement from FIFA and UEFA said they could act as free agents until June. But do they then have to go back to their club? Because there's absolutely no point in signing them at the moment because they can't play because they haven't been registered. So we'll wait and see. Claudinho would be an interesting one. Myself and Carl Matchett are going to have a look at this on the next AI Scouted and decide, well, not decide, but maybe give a list of some players Liverpool could look at from the Ukraine and Russia if they wanted to uh, to dip their toes in. Uh, what have we got here? Liverpool could, make, could use Premier League unrest to make transfer a complete Jurgen Klopp's midfield. Uh, this one, I think, is about Calvin Phillips. Tell you one thing, if there's a bit of unrest and uncertainty, the midfielder to be going to get, well, there's two of them, both at Chelsea. Mason Mount would be a perfect fit, uh, as would Mateo Kovacic. If you get either of those to go with Fabinho and Thiago, I mean, it would be the perfect midfield. Kai Havertz is another one I'd love because I think you could make him the new Bobby Firmino as a false nine. So, Definitely one that I'd be interested in there. Uh, Jurgen Klopp, Jurgen Klopp, Jurgen Klopp can get Dream James Milner air in 14 goal star who foiled <clears throat> Manchester United. Right. I don't know why we'd need a James Milner air. You know, it, it, it doesn't seem like something we would need to do. Uh, but Fabian Reader of Young Boys is the player mentioned here. He is a 20-year-old who scored against Manchester United in the Champions League this season. Uh, he is a talented player. He's a Swiss under-20 international, not yet called up for the under-21s. But he's not... How do I put this nicely? He's not an elite-level prospect. He, he's not... Jumping off the page when you when you look at his numbers, he's not someone that when you watch him play, he stands out a mile as being above and beyond what else is on the pitch. So I, I'm not really sure he's somebody we'd have a massive amount of interest in. Maybe in a year or two when he develops a bit more. I mean, five goals, nine assists isn't a bad return. But it is the Swiss League and the Swiss Cup. He's got a goal and an assist in the Champions League. It's not a bad return, but it is the Swiss League. And the Swiss League is not a very strong league. Uh, There is a new piece up on AnfieldIndex.com, a timely reboot by the machine, Stephen Smith. There are some pieces about the intergame, obviously, there is a piece put together by Dan Rhodes with the best bits from the latest Moby on the spot. There's obviously the post-match raw from the other day that you can listen to if you haven't already. And today, myself and Mo Chatra will be recording a Money Talks, which should be out at about half past six. So there's that. Uh, that's it for me today, folks. I will see you tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, 
where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.